Hi, everyone. Um, my name is TJ Blanco. I use they, them pronouns. I am an experimental filmmaker based in Milwaukee. Um, and my film is Seen Unseen. What is your film about? My film is about uh, trans and gender nonconforming individuals and how they engage with this concept of queer visibility and being seen as trans people or queer people um, and kind of bumping up against those, uh, the idea that visibility leads to liberation. Because as we've seen, there's heightened visibility for queer and trans people for years now. And it, there's also heightened violence and a lot of state violence with that. So we can't say that visibility has led to liberation in any way. This was a student film project. Are you still going to film school? I am. I'm a senior at UWM this year. Okay, so you, you made this when you were a junior? Yes. Okay, it was part of a class project, or was this something that you wanted to do because you had this idea and you really re wanted to do it? Um, I, the latter, I would say. I, because my, the class that this was for was um, 16 millimeter, so really the only constraints were time constraints and that it had to be shot on black and white 16 millimeter film um so yeah when you say time constraints does it mean that you had a certain amount of time to get it done or running time both you couldn't go over like eight minutes i know your film's like seven and a half or something yeah my film was on the longer side they wanted it like between like kind of like five minutes was a cutoff but um I think I had a different cut that I actually submitted for my class then and added stuff back in for the the version that you're seeing. Okay. Yeah, yeah cuz you know when I watch it I when you, and you tell me it had to be like 5 minutes or so I don't know what you would have cut. Yeah, I think I'm trying to remember what I did cut. I think it's the piece um where I'm kind of like playing with the mirror and this idea of the like director also being a gaze. Um, um, so yeah, I think that part wow. was there. Because I like that symbolism in the film. And you yeah, cut that? I, I do too. That's why it's back in. <laughs> okay. How was this film doing so far on the festival circuit? I don't think, I think this is only the second festival it's playing at. So I haven't, I don't know if I've submitted it as many places. I don't, it's not my favorite of my films, but I do like it and I'm happy to share it with you all. Oh, really? It's not your, it's not one of your favorites? No, I have like, I, not because of the topic or because of any of the people involved. There are just some like technical things that kind of bothered me about the film um, as a filmmaker. Oh, that's interesting. Cause when I watch it, I love the look of it. I, I'm a person that really likes the look of film. And I I thought it was beautifully photographed. And obviously you transferred it digitally so you can edit it. But I just, I really love the look of the, the film itself. Yeah, I do too. Um, thank you. Yes, I just, I think I'm a little self-conscious about certain parts of it, but but not that it's on film or not the topic and yeah. What I find interesting is each person that you have in this, and let, let me ask this first, how did you get the people involved before I go into my next segment on that? Yeah, so everyone involved is a friend of mine um, that I just knew already from being a queer person in Milwaukee that I just asked to uh, be a part of the film. Okay, so each person in the film, we hear their voice, on top of their the image of themselves or sometimes it's an obscured image of themselves and we don't see them talk on camera which normally something like th like that would happen in a in a film in a documentary type setting or something like this where someone is expressing their feelings you chose not to show them on camera talking can you explain that yeah, um, I think the there's two answers to that. One is practical in that um, recording sync sound is a whole thing with film, right? Like we're 
so used to digital now that you don't really even like think about oh that I can't record sound but with film cameras you can't record sound so you'd have to like physically um, slate them and match up those sounds later but I think the the more important answer to that question is that I identify as an experimental filmmaker and I'm interested in subverting the expectations of documentary for something that I think is more um, artist made and that um, I don't like talking head documentaries so I don't make them. This is this is also a very timely film too considering the political atmosphere out there. Um, how's the reaction to this? It's been good. I haven't had any bad reaction. I would say that some reactions seem somewhat lukewarm. I think um, a lot of uh, cis people or not queer people maybe think that this doesn't matter or that it doesn't um, affect their lives, which we, we know that we're all connected, right? And that our rights are all connected. And so when you start going for the most vulnerable groups, it's only going to be a matter of time before they come for you. Mm -hmm. So everything you should care about everybody and their rights, um, both because it's ethical, but also because we are all connected. So um, yeah, I feel that for some people, maybe it's difficult for them to engage with the subject or Maybe they don't know any trans people. Maybe they haven't heard some of these terms. Maybe the lexicon is just different. Um, but I haven't had any sort of negative reaction, which is I'm thankful for. Do you have anything else you want to say to that you might have that we might have not touched upon? So I can include that in there. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons that I decided to make this film on you know, I was taking a 16 millimeter class. And one of the reasons I chose to have this film be the one that I shot on 16 was that I wanted to situate queer people within a historical context and visually show that queer people have always been here. Um, so I think there's, you know, this kind of like dearth of images of queer people because we had to live in secret for so long that they're, you know, you don't go through old scrapbooks or like images in newspapers or magazines and see out queer people and especially not out trans people and there are always exceptions there's people who live very um loudly and we owe a great deal to them for doing so but um yeah i wanted it to be in black and white and on 16 to kind of make those historical connections because queer people have always been here and we're not going anywhere. Well, thank you for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.